What's going on everybody? Happy Saturday. I'm actually redoing the video I did from today because I just blabbed way, way too much now that I looked at the time on to it. So I'm going to try to keep it on time. Alright, so Salem, Indiana today. Um, really good, nice show. Uh, dealers, except for one, was really, really friendly. Overall atmosphere, really, really good. I was told now last two times I was a buyer, so I wasn't there for the full show type deal on both of them. Uh, they told me they had better crowds in and stuff like that, but I think it's due to one, two, three other shows in, within the vicinity of being people being able to go to, plus still being that Memorial Day week where people were on vacation. But I got to give it to the guy that sets us up. It, it's really a good atmosphere. And the way that he does it all, really good. I mean, he brought in, I, I don't know, it was some kind of pastry for breakfast for people. He does pizzas for lunches for got everybody there. I mean, it's, it's just outstanding to be able to do something like that and be able to take care of everybody. Really, really nice. Um, this is the third show out of five weeks. Two left. I don't know if I would be able to go more than five weeks straight because I'll tell you, it's, it's energy draining. It really is. I don't know if I said this in the video or not already, but um, I didn't do any sales today. I was set up, but I, it was no issue because I was going in regardless, so I figured I'd set up. People wanted to buy, they can. So we're going to go over what I bought, and then we'll hit some of the trends up there and everything. And I'll talk about the one dealer real quick on to here that uh, we'll just say he falls into a different ballpark. All right, so... Three cards all came from the same guy. I was going to have more video on this too, but when I walked around in the morning, dealers were still setting up. There were a couple cards I wanted to show people. When I went back around lunchtime, those couple cards sold. I was kind of upset because I was like, man, I wanted to buy one of them. So, uh, towards the end of the show, I was like, I'm going to try one last run in here and see if I can find a couple things to buy, you know. Because I, I like to support the shows. You guys all know I go to shows. I try to spend... You know, a little bit of money here and there, sometimes more than others, you know. But I like to try to circulate some money around, stuff like that. So I picked up three cards. Um, the first card was more of like a toss-in to make the deal whole type deal, which was really cool, the guy. So first up, Ruddy Jackson, Diamond Icons, 2020, 14 out of 25. Really cool card. I like Reggie's autos, always have. I, I can see he's getting older, too, because if you start looking at some of the older stuff, it was a little bit more neater. So, this will probably go off, I'm thinking, to be graded. I have to look at it. It might. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Okay, next two cards are the ones that I pinpoint in the case. The bottom card, when I show it, I, mean, I know because I told Joey, he's like, man, you're going to start having people think you're buying a trend. Really not. I have like 30 dudes that I watch um on ebay constantly every day i get 30 emails of people well people post cards of these players or, or sets and stuff that i'm working on so it just so happens sometimes i just win one of that you know hit that player because i win those auctions i don't really do a lot of buy it now um but no way am i like saying go buy any of these cards it's just what i like and just what i've been refocusing myself on to all right so, second card, Derek Jeter, Diamond Icon, same year, 2020. Numbered out of 15. Really cool to be able to pick this up. Uh, really happy with it. This will go get great. I think it's going to come back a 9. I thought I saw a little bit of whiting somewhere on here. I could be wrong. But either way, I'm going to get this one slabbed. Just Jeter, he sells high, gets slabbed. That way, I don't know, people don't argue about the conditions. All right, last card up, Transcendent. I've purchased now a couple, two autographs of this person. And it just so happens, you don't see these a lot. Just like Jeter Autos, it shows. I don't see a lot of them, but I definitely don't see a lot of these. Hank Aaron. Transcendent from 18, I believe this was. Yep, 18 Transcendent, the high-end product. You know, costs like $20,000. You get the VIP Invitational. It's like half the amount. Then you get that one big old frame. It could be a cut auto. Stuff like that in there. It's worth your bulk. Then you get a bunch of uh, base cards. There, or not base, but uh, regular cards. Then you get X amount of uh, autos. But I picked up the Hank Aaron. This will get graded as well too. 
Um, just so happens that I'm not like trying to corner the market on Hank Aaron and say go buy him or not. It just so happens that I picked up my last kind of like three deals. Hank, well, four, three out of five deals. Hank Aaron. The other two are still in the mail. They're not Hank Aaron's. I promise you on that. So kind of happy on that stuff there. Let me know what you guys think of those. I I think um, it was a really good price on to consider I was going to grade two of these for sure. I don't think the Reggie. I think I'm just probably going to put that up uh, and sell it because I know a couple guys that are big collectors onto that. Let them at least have it if they want a graded, graded type deal. Okay, so trends, trends, trends. So again, week three of five. Again, I give it to anybody who does this stuff every single weekend because I don't know if I could do that. Wow, it's a lot of tear down set up, and I don't only take two showcases now. I don't even bring value boxes. Speaking of value boxes, there you go. That's the number one trend. People are looking for them value boxes, digging through to find stuff that they can make money on. I can tell you a year ago, nobody was doing value boxes. Hardly anybody was going buying them out. All of a sudden, people start doing YouTube videos on it, and pff, it's horrible now. <laughs> You have to be a dealer to set up to go find that one first one and hope you strike it there because otherwise it's going to be slim pickings towards the end. Uh, overall, there was a lot of vintage again at this show. More vintage than I've seen. Kudos to the guys in the vintage. I wish I could have went through and looked at all the stuff more in depth. I know they had some nice pieces on to it, but just didn't have a chance. Plus, I spent a chunk here and I didn't want to go anymore without having sales for the day. Um, all right, so we hit the value box one. The uh, the next one I'm going to hit, um, a lot of guys still holding to high values. At the same time frame, buyers are still at the, the point to where, you know, the mentality is cash is king. I will have to say for me, it's not cash is king because I'm one of them guys that, if my card's marked at a price, it's probably marked either very fair or at a comp. So if it say the comp's like twelve hundred ninety eight dollars, I probably put it like twelve fifty or twelve. I might put it twelve ninety eight just so I know what the last sale was. And I'm always willing to work on certain cards with price. But if I have a thousand dollar card, why would I take six hundred dollars for it? Seriously, I mean I can get more of that on eBay after twelve percent fees. <laughs> But a lot of guys still looking to, you know, hopefully get that big steal of the deal going across. It's it's crazy. Crazy, crazy. Um, but I do have seen that a lot the last three shows, including this one. It wasn't as bad at this show, but it was still present. I had a dealer come up to try to argue, or I shouldn't say argue, but use the um, used car salesman pitches by telling me that could all this and that, I could buy this on eBay for that. My mentality would go buy it on eBay. You don't have to buy it off of me. I mean, just because there's one low sell onto a card out there that went off at a weird hour, don't mean nothing at all. I take auctions with a grain of salt. Um, only because the endings and people catching them at the right time are kind of weird onto it. Now, if it's like... A card that has, like, it's been selling frequently in auctions, I'll look at more. But if it's only been one auction or two, it went off in the last, like, 90 days. I look at more to buy it nows. Just for a more uh, peace of mind to me. But I had, uh, like I said, the one uh, seller in there decided to try to tell me all this craziness in there. And basically, just walk away, dude. Don't matter if you walk away sad or mad, just walk away. Because whenever I have a sign up there, it says something. You read, my, let me tell you my sign said, it had an arrow at the uh, Hank Aaron uh, cut auto. It said not for sale. And I usually have been now putting something like that up, saying I'm buying like one-on-ones, bat barrels, and bat knobs, right? Etc. When it says not for sale, it means not for sale. Why would you keep badgering me about it? And I tell you, it would have to be an astronomical amount for me to move it, because I'm not moving it. It's just showing I'm buying stuff like this. And the reason why I do it, there's a lot of people that will walk around and they'll see a sign saying buying all this stuff. And when they bring it, the guys don't pay for it. They don't get it. They it, it, It's a long, 
uh, messed up thing because I've been hearing going on. And it's been cross country. Me, uh, I just showed I will buy it. If I don't have the cash on me, I'll be tell you flat up I don't have that kind of cash on me. Um, we'll have to work something out or meet you next show somewhere or something like that on to it. But just crazy. I mean, with it, and then the same time frame, same guy, like I said, trying to tell me this and that. I'm like, dude, if they're still here, I'm just grading them. I mean, I just have them in a display. If somebody wants to buy them at the price, it was a Bonds Auto that I showed you guys last week. Um, the other Hank Aaron Auto was out. I'm trying to remember what else. There was another two cards. I, I'd have to go through my showcases to look. And I can just tell the guy's whole mentality was like he wanted to grab it, make a quick flip, and get you know type card because when i bought this hank aaron off this gentleman i asked him if he had any weird low ball offers he's like yeah and he pointed the guy right out and i also had a couple other dealers that talked about him too the way he was handling himself very very unprofessional um <laughs> immature too i would say but those guys they're far and few in between i just brush them off i don't give them a whole lot of satisfaction i just go buy it on ebay or wherever you saw it at i mean i know how often bonds autos pop up on auctions so the guy can't get over on me because i get an email every day if a new bonds auto pops up just something i'm going after again don't go after bonds autos that's just something i one of my guys on the list that i just keep an eye on if something is around a price where i think i would buy it i pick it up type deal uh all right, so that's that. I'm through uh, retail. I don't know if I touched retail now because I, like I said, I've done this video twice. A lot of different retail cards still out there. I see in a lot of the stuff dipping in price. A lot of dealers are fluctuating on that dip price, which is good. But a lot of it out there, a lot. Uh, I, I those are really the biggest three I saw on trends. Other than that, I had three different people come to my table. Uh, the Chicago White Sox, um, what's that guy's name? Tim Anderson. Had three different people ask me if I had any Tim Andersons. That's it's one of the strangest things I've ever had people ask for. Am I missing some on Tim Anderson? And if I am, please put in the comments down there. I mean, because I'd like to know if there's some kind of secret like thing going on with Tim Anderson out there. That I need to look at maybe pick a couple things up or something. I have no idea. Um... But overall, like I said, very, very friendly atmosphere in there. I liked it. It reminded me of the Derby City card show where it's usually very, well, I should say it's smooth, fluent. You know, you're always going to get guys that want stuff at pennies on a dollar. Just, you know, brush them away as nice as you can type deal and move on type deal as well. I had another thought, too. I'm trying to make sure I covered everything because I had it all in the first video, but it was about 10 minutes longer than this, maybe 15. But that's really about everything out there from today. I, I had fun there. I got to enjoy a lot of conversations with people, uh, talked with other dealers out there today. Uh, same exact thing that I've been seeing, they've been seeing at other shows they've been at. So it's just more of... I don't want to say learning curve, but I'm trying to see how what I'm seeing on the almighty YouTube transpires to other shows as well, too. Just to see, you know, there's rumors some people out there do these uh, do YouTube videos or faking them. I don't know. I mean, I've sold some big stuff here at shows here recently, so I, I don't know onto that part there. But I'm just more cur trying to see other trends of what people are looking for, stuff like that, that everybody else is talking about. You know, I'm just trying to see who's out there pumping and dumping. Pumping and dumping, guys. Pumping and dumping. I'm going to get a t-shirt made up. Pumping and dumping. But all right, guys. Have a good one. Appreciate y'all watching the video. Again, let me know if you guys know something about Tim Anderson I'm missing. And what you guys think three cards today. Only three, I know. But they were nice. They were nice for me. All right, take care. Have a good rest of the week. Catch y'all next video.